Last week, we started a new series. We're, we're doing a open-ended study on spiritual warfare. Because we're in a battle, we're in a war to the death. But in order to be in this war, you got to die first. Okay? And I, I don't know about you guys. You guys have different hobbies, different interests, different tasks. I have always be, been interested in strategy and tactics. I've read Sun Tzu. I've read Klaus von, von Clausewitz. Uh, I've read Tacitus. Uh, I, I've read a lot of things on tactics. <laughs> One thing that is consistent among all of the great military minds in history, there are three things that you have to know in order to be successful on the battlefield. One, you've got to know your enemy. Who are you fighting? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Two, you have to know yourself. You have to be honest and how you view yourself. What can I do? What can I not do? What are my strengths and what are what my weaknesses? Where do I need to guard? And three, know the battleground. Know the battleground. Pick your battles. Pick on ground of your choosing, not of the enemies. And last week we started on the intro that I was really hoping to get through my intro was those three points, the <coughs> maxims of war. And I got most of one, most of one done. Know your enemy. We talked last week about the devil, Satan. I gave you some information about who he is, what his plan is, where he came from, where he's going. And this is things, this is information we need to know in order to be prepared. Now I've got just a couple more bullet points that I want to touch on regarding Satan. Okay? Because we talked last week. Yeah, you know what? He's greater than you are. He's got more power than you do. But not more than the one who lives in you. He is not God. He is not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. He knows more than you do. But he doesn't know everything. He is not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere all at one time. Now, I don't know how it works with angelic beings. I don't know if they can go boop, boop, and, you know, from Toledo to here that quick. I don't know. I don't care. <clears throat> to me, that's not something that I need to know. But I know he is not omnipresent. He is also not omnipotent. He is not all-powerful. Those three things belong to God alone. Okay? So, he doesn't know everything. He is not everywhere. And he's not all-powerful. But, he knows more than you do. He can be places much more quickly than you can, and more than you'd expect, and he is stronger than you are, which is why we have an intercessor, we have a big brother, we are covered in the blood of the lamb, we are not his any longer. We have been bought with a price. That price was paid at Calvary. We don't belong to ourselves. We don't belong to him. We belong to God. Okay? So, one of the points that I, I really should have addressed last week, and I just didn't get there in time, he's a liar. Okay? He's a liar. And when he speaks, he speaks lies. How do you know when it's a lie? And how do you know when it's a truth? How do you know it's not partially truth and partially lie? Well, we have the Word. And the Word tells us things. And when what we are hearing here or here does not line up with the Word, it's a lie. Okay? 
So when the enemy comes at you and starts telling you things, questioning your worth, your value, oh, God really doesn't love you. Remember what you did? Putting things in front of you to make them seem desirable, and God's Word says, ha, ha, no, stay away from those. Don't go there. But it looks really fun. <laughs> wow, that could be really good. It's a lie. Stand firm. Scripture tells us that we are to resist the devil. Okay? We humble ourselves before God. He gives us the strength to resist. And then the devil has to do what? Flee. Flee. Now it's interesting because when Jesus was in the desert and he was facing the temptations, the devil came at him not once, not twice, but three times. And when the devil left, what does it say? It doesn't say he just ran away. He was waiting for a more opportune time. So that's something we need to be aware of. You chase him off right now, you can guarantee he's coming back. He's going to be back. And it might be in the exact same way, because we're kind of stupid that way. We have certain areas that we just fall in. And he always knows, if I come here and just set that on the ground, they're going to trip right over it. Hey, look, there's that thing I went over again. Okay? He can do that because we don't learn. But he also comes at us from different angles. I struggle with things today that I never struggled with when I was young. I had hair then. <laughs> and I get up in the morning and I look in the mirror and I think, who in the world is that? <laughs> he comes at me in different areas that I never had to struggle with when I was younger. But he's a liar. One of the things that we have to do, we have to be quick to identify the lie. But we can't stop there. Okay? This is one of the things that Christy has been much quicker at picking up than I am. And I hate that. <laughs> because I'll get into a funk and she'll go, you're, you're listening to lies. I don't want to hear that right now. Tell me what a good person I am. <laughs> You're listening to the lies of the enemy. He is speaking lies to you. Okay, yes, he's speaking lies, but I believe him. <laughs> See, we can't just stop at acknowledging the lie. We can't just stop at identifying it. We have to do something else. What do we have to do? We have to replace it with the truth. And as much as my wife may esteem me, that is a very small candle when compared to the magnificent, radiant sun of God's love for me. And if I can't be content with God's love for me, I will never be content with her love for me. So we have to identify the lie that the enemy is speaking to us by knowing this, okay, by knowing this, and we have to be able to take the truth that this says, and put it in its place. No. I am a child of God. I am loved by the sovereign creator of the universe. The master of all things has redeemed me and given me value beyond anything this world can offer. So, what do I have to feel bad about in looking at myself? Identify the lie and put the truth in its place. Resist the devil. And no matter how many times he repeats the lie, you always repeat right back the truth. Always. You're going to lose. No, I'm not. I may stumble in this fight, but his word tells me that I am victorious because he's already won the war. He's already won the war. 
Now Satan also, Scripture tells us, he comes at us in two different guises. <clears throat> he comes at us like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. He, he, man, he's a mighty beast. You read in the Psalms, you read through the Proverbs. Lions were something held with a lot of respect in Scripture. Now we don't have to worry about that a heck of a lot around here. Although, I don't know, a month and a half or so ago, there was a mountain lion walking around in Stevensville, I heard. That gives you something to think about. He is looking for whom he may devour. So, if he's coming at you as a lion, you know he's a liar, he's a lion lion. I just made that one up. <laughs> you can write that down. <laughs> He's coming at you, telling you untruths, that he wants to devour you. Yeah, he may want to devour me, but I'm more than a mouthful because I've got God living inside of me. I have got God going before me. I have got God on either side of me, and I've got God following me up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've got to go through him to get to me. So that lion stands outside that barrier and tries to intimidate. Your life is bad. This is a bad situation. This is horrible. This is, this is terrible. You're right. It is a horrible situation. It's a terrible situation. It's a sad situation. But God is the victor. And God is mightier than my situation. And God is going to use this to build in me faith that is more valuable than gold. So when the enemy comes at you as a lion, keep in mind that you're the son of the lion tamer. And his lion is puny and pathetic compared to the lion of the tribe of Judah. Because that's the king of beasts right there. Scripture also tells us, though, that he comes at us in the guise of an angel of light. As a matter of fact, we are warned to be careful because he will infiltrate the church with false teachers, false believers. Well, why not? Because Satan himself does that. How did Satan manage to wreck things in the garden? By coming into something he wasn't. By trying to present something that sounded good, sounded reasonable. Who wouldn't want to be like God? I don't, because I don't want to have to deal with a lot of your people's stuff. <laughs> I look at some of the stuff you guys got to go through, and I think, God, <clears throat> thank you, Father, that you are capable of dealing with that, because I have no idea how to handle that. Thank you, God, that you can handle that. So he comes in as an angel of light, trying to buddy up to you, schmoozing you, schmaltzing you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Church is good. So is fishing. So is sleeping in. Sleeping, God does, God's not going to condemn you for sleeping in. Come on. It's a personal relationship between you and the Father. Just make sure you say a prayer before you eat breakfast. You'll be fine. You don't really need all that church stuff. I mean, it gets warm in there, and they've got flowery carpet and, you know, <laughs> the pastor says weird things and does stuff and, you know, and, you know, really, it's okay. It's just okay. Take a day off. Take a day for yourself. It's a little me time. Do you see the lie all throughout there? Do you see how every one of us has fallen prey to that lie? How easily we fall to that? And, you know, I, I fall to that myself. Because there are days when I wake up on a Sunday morning and think, wow, can I call in sick? <laughs> Dennis always has a message prepared. <laughs> It'd be really good for the intern to have to be Johnny on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> he needs some work. It says to be prepared in season and out of season. He wants to come in and deceive you. 
That's why everything that you hear, you hold up into the light of God's Word, not just the verses that you want to apply, all of the verses. We don't just go through and pick out the ones that fit, that make us feel good, or sometimes the ones that just make us feel bad. Some of us are weird that way. We've got to look at all of them in light of each other because God wrote all of them. Okay? So, he's a lion lion. He's also a lion angel of light because that's the language that he speaks. Okay? So, let's just kind of go over some of the things that Scripture has told us about our adversary. Satan means adversary, the one who opposes you. The devil is a slanderer, says bad things about you. Who does he slander you to? Well, a lot of times he slanders you to yourself. But he's also slandering you before the Father. We talked about Job. How Satan came before the throne of God and tried to slander Job. And God said, all right, test him. Test him. But I'm setting the boundaries. You can't go beyond these boundaries. This is all you're allowed to do. He's an accuser. He comes to God to accuse us, the brethren. God's got an answer for that because we have an intercessor. We have someone who stands at the very right hand of God and says, no, no, that's only a partial truth. Yeah, they messed up, they blew it, but I paid for that, and that, and for some of us, and that, and that, and that. <coughs> I, that's all paid. Day and night, he's interceding on our behalf. We believe he was an archangel. Now, archangel, you're not going to find that word in Scripture. We only know three, three angels that were named in Scripture. We know Lucifer, which some of your, your passages in your Scripture, they, they won't say Lucifer. They'll call him like the son of the dawn or the radiant one, because okay, that's what Lucifer means. All right? We know Michael. We know Gabriel. Okay? Scripture indicates that he was an incredibly beautiful and glorious being but that that was his downfall because he looked at that and he took pride. And he said, I will exalt myself above the heavens. Okay? And, and he fell, and God cast him out of heaven, and one-third of the angels went with him. And, you know, there's a whole lot there that we really don't need to get into right now. You need to know that he's out there. He absolutely hates God. He absolutely hates you. And he's got a lot of cronies to do his bidding, and they don't like you much either. Okay? So for this, this stupid, ignorant idea that the devil's my friend, he's nobody's friend. The devil's in it for himself. It's all about him, not you. You know, they, they say that great men only become great by standing on the shoulders of other men. He don't care. He's just, he wants to stomp you. <coughs> all right? So he is called the ruler of this world and the prince of the air. Which is funny because he only thinks that he is. There are certain people that he has authority over, but ultimately, all of this, he is subject to God's will in. God has set the boundaries and said, you can come this far, no further. Okay? That should give you great encouragement. Because whatever Satan is at play in your life in... God has allowed him that much and said, you will go no further because God is bringing you through this. I can't do this. You're right. Absolutely, you can't do this. That's why God is letting it happen. So you realize you can't, but he can. That you need him. Not just at that moment of salvation, but you need him every day, every moment of every day. He's a tempter. He puts things out in front of you to cause you to sin, to cause you to stumble. 
He's a deceiver. He wants to blind you. He wants you to think this is okay. Oh, it's, it's okay. And he gives you some of the most asinine reasons for this. And we fall for them. Oh, that's covered by the blood. You can do that. Well, God told me not to. Really? <coughs> really? He just doesn't want you enjoying life. He wants to hold you. He wants you to be stodgy like Pastor Glenn. You really want to be like that? I don't want to be like that. He deceives us. He is beyond our comprehension. We can't figure him out. Don't try. <clears throat> I've, I've heard people yell at the devil, I've heard people pray at the devil, I've, I've heard people do really weird things at the devil. You're wasting time. He's already defeated. You rebuke him and let it go. Because it's not you anyway. It's God. Jude makes that very clear. Foolish people slander celestial beings. But even Michael brought no accusation against Lucifer, against Satan, when he contested with him over Moses' body. So why should we? What makes us think we've got anything over on him? It's not us, it's God. We stand on the authority that he has. His eternity is fixed. He knows he's lost. All right? He knows that his end is coming. He lost at Calvary. He didn't realize it. He was thinking he won a victory. He killed the Messiah. He deceived the Jewish leaders of the day. He deceived the pagan leaders of the day. He killed the Messiah, but three days later, the Messiah proved that he wasn't just a man. He was God, and he was the Son of God, and he was raised back to life. Can you imagine what that must have been like? We can't keep him. He's getting up. Sit on him, sit on him, sit on him. He just passed through us. Who's going to tell the boss? Hey, you know that guy that we took care of? Little problem. He's back. <laughs> He knows that his eternity is fixed. He knows his punishment is coming. And he is lashing out with everything that he has. And he wants to mar the beauty of God's creation. He wants to besmirch his bride. He wants to keep as many people away from their creator as he possibly can. Take a look what's going on in the world today. The church is under attack. And I mean vicious attack. You look at what's going on pretty much anywhere outside of North America. And we have people being slaughtered. in the name of Jesus Christ, for the name of Jesus Christ. Because they will not back down. All you got to do is say, I don't believe. We'll let you go. Say you believe in Allah. Say you believe in communism. Say you just don't believe anything, and we'll let you go. Heck, we'll even set you up in a position where you get some benefits. The church in America is under a completely different attack. See, that's the roaring lion there. Church in America has been lulled to sleep by the angel of light. We've gotten fat and sassy.
and he's rocked the cradle till we've gotten into a stupor. We have allowed the enemy into the body of Christ. We've allowed him in America to come in and take the name of Christ and make it something profane. Because you go into a lot of churches today and you cannot tell the difference between that and some kind of social club. I know churches that have given up Bible study so they can go to art exhibits and wine tasting festivals. Now, I have nothing against art exhibits or wine tasting festivals. I'm not going to go to one. I don't like the taste. But if you want to go to one, feel free, just not during Bible study. Okay? Because there are churches out there today who are drawing in people... And the sole productive purpose of that church is to keep them asleep. Messages are being preached without the word of God in them. Songs are being sung that do nothing to bring glory to God. Prayers are being prayed to I don't know who about stuff that doesn't matter. God make us happy. Bring us profit. Give us success that we can be like the world. Plus. There's no plus in that. If you're like the world, what does Scripture say? You're an enemy of God. So in America and in Europe, where Europe has led, America has rushed blindly to follow. We have forsaken our first love. And we have allowed idols in to distract us and to keep us from worshiping the true God. We've allowed our lives to get hectic and busy. Satan just gives us a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And all of a sudden we turn around and we go, gosh, I can't even remember the last time I read my Bible. Good heavens. I can't remember the last time I had intimacy with God. Where'd he go? He's right where you left him when you took off, waiting for you to come back calling for you to come back, allowing rough stuff in your life so you will come back. Satan doesn't need the roaring lion in America. The angel of light is doing just fine. Thank you. And the churches where things are happening are keeping it inside the walls. We, we become a mutual admiration society where we pat each other on the back at how great we are and how God moves in our congregation and our fellowship. And then we walk out the door and our masks fall off and the real us steps forward. Or maybe the mask comes up and we go out and that's what the world sees. They're not seeing what happens inside here. Inside the walls of the fellowship. We've become voiceless in the world. Or worse yet, we've joined our voices to the chorus they're singing. We've allowed him to dictate how things will play out. Just go with the flow, just go with the flow. Get along with it. Hey, 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 you don't want people to get turned off to your religion. Yeah, you. Because if that's the stark contrast between what I believe and what they're li living, they need to know. You want to buddy them right into the gates of hell? That, is, is that your goal? Because that's what's happening. 
We all have people we know that we're not testifying to. We are escorting them right to the gate to hell. Have a good day. Most of us won't even say, praying for you. We think we've done a good thing when we walk out the door, shout over our shoulder, God bless, what was that? Being a Christian is hard. It comes at great price. God has paid the price for you to become a Christian. You've got to pay the price as a Christian. You are His servant. You don't get to dictate where you go and what you will do. You ask Him and you follow what He dictates, what He says, where He wants you to go. Say what He wants you to say, no matter how stupid it is. I told you a few months ago, I was in Super One and I was walking down the aisle pushing the cart, because that's my job. <laughs> my job is to push the cart and not let go of it and put things in the cart that I want. <laughs> that's my job. And I pushed the cart and Christy was looking at something on the shelf and I'm just kind of standing there like most husbands do when they're shopping. <laughs> And there was a worker there, a, a girl that was standing down at the end of the aisle that she was putting some stuff on the shelf. And I looked down at her, and as soon as my eyes made contact, I felt like God wanted me to speak to her. <clears throat> God wanted me to tell her how much he loved her and how beautiful she was in his sight. <laughs> Clean up on aisle three. <laughs> I don't know that girl. Have somebody that knows her tell her that. And I fought with him and I argued with him and I got, I got all the way to the other side of the store. <clears throat> I saw her again as I'm going to the other side of the store. I get to the other side of the store and Christy says, oh, we forgot something, which is another part of my job, to go back to get the things we forgot. <laughs> I'll go get it. And I'm kind of praying and, and I'm still feeling this prompting. God's urging me. God's telling me. So, all right, fine. God, if she's on the aisle that I go to to get this, well, I don't even remember what it was. We probably didn't even need it. God was just using that to make me go. If she's on the aisle, I will tell her. And as I'm saying that, I come around the corner, and there she is. <laughs> I, I, that's, I didn't really mean that like that. All right, God, here we go. And I walked up and I said, excuse me, ma'am, I, I just wanted to let you know that God sees you as beautiful and he loves you very much. And she went. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I told you! <laughs> and she kind of mumbled a thank you and turned and kind of went very quickly over to the cleanup on aisle three. <laughs> And I walk back and I'm fuming. I'm like, God, why would you have me do that? You can make somebody else look stupid. I always look stupid. Make somebody else do it. Christy hasn't looked stupid today. Oh, no, no. You're so good at it. I like to use you. Now, I honestly, I have only seen that girl a couple more times since then. I have no idea what God is doing in her life. I don't need to know what God is doing in her life, but I have to be faithful with what he's given me to do. We pray every day for ministry seen and unseen, planned and unplanned. I hate Super One. <laughs> I can't go into Super One without something happening. So Friday, shopping day. We got to go. Where are we going? Super One. <laughs> okay. How, how big is the list? If it's only three or four things, man, we can be in and out. Boom. But man, if it's like 15 things, he's got all kinds of time to talk to me. And Christy kind of laughed. <laughs> yeah, we always have ministry at Super One. He said, you think it's funny. <laughs> And we went to Super One, and I got in my 
super one husband position. <laughs> and we went through and we got stuff. I actually had to think because Christy added something to the list that I make and I needed to, well, uh, let's see what goes into that. So I had to think for a while and we got all the way through and we got out the door. No ministry. Oh, God didn't ask me to look stupid. No, he saved that for when I got home. <laughs> God has a purpose and plan for each one of us. Okay? Our walk with God doesn't end at the cross. It starts there. It starts there. And we start at the cross and we run headlong into eternity running as though to win the prize. All the while the enemy's throwing things at us. He's whistling. He's throwing things to distract us. Sometimes he's running alongside of us going, yeah, hey, the race course goes this way. Sometimes he's running up behind us. I'm going to get you! I can run fast when people are like that behind me. But we have got to run the race with endurance as though to win the prize. And we've got to be tools fit for the master's hand. The only way we get to be fit for the master's hand by allowing him to shape us, to mold us, and make us. Okay? You want to be a hammer for the Lord? Or has got to be refined. The wood has got to be shaped. There's a process involved in making even the simplest tools. Father, we bless you today. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. That, Father, everything that we need to know is in there. We thank you, God, that we're in a war, a war to the death, but it's not our death because you have given us new life. Father, that you're opening our eyes to see how the battle is being fought. God, that you give us everything we need to wage this war. Father, so often it's done on our knees with heads bowed, hands raised, hearts open and poured out to you. Focusing our mind on all that you have said. Being obedient when you task us with a thing. Because nothing is insignificant. Nothing is inconsequential. You have a purpose and a plan for everything you have us do. Help us to be faithful servants and stewards of all that you've gifted us with. Father, to use the giftings of your spirit to their full purpose. Father, to not grow weary, to not go grow faint, but to endure steadfastly. <laughs> patiently seeing the growth that you're causing in us seeing all that you're trying to accomplish we bless you father because you love us and your plans for us are good and we thank you father in jesus name amen, amen.